Hi everybody, welcome to the latest episode of From the Rock to the Cloud. Um, as always, you know, we're going to talk about the latest technology that comes from a Microsoft perspective all around Server 2022, around Azure and all of that exciting stuff. Um, now, it's kind of like, this is Thanksgiving week, uh, what it was last week, so I've got a turkey uh on my on my little screen uh for everybody so uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna give thanks for the amazing microsoft server and cloud technology and who else could, would we want to give thanks to somebody who's just spent uh you know three weeks in mexico having a lovely holiday um and he's totally tuned into this whole sort of wavelength right now so we've got we've got pierre so pierre say hello to everybody and let them know who you are uh, how you doing how's it going? Yeah, how you doing? My name is Pierre Roman. I'm a senior cloud advocate with Microsoft. Uh, I have done a lot of work in migration over the past few years, and I have to admit, it's getting easier with every iteration of the product. So, but the tool is only one thing. It's it's the easiest part of the migration. The planning, and we can discuss that in a bit, is where well, you... Uh... Well, we are going to discuss that, and you, you've jumped ahead straight into Talking Turkey. Uh, see what I did yes. there. Uh, we're, we're going to talk about <laughs> Azure Migrate. That's what we're going to talk about today. Like, uh, obviously, it's great, but we're going to talk about Azure Migrate, and um, you know, let's let's just jump into it. So, um, first of all, uh, you know, Roman, what 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 is it? Right, that's always the first question, right? Like, what what is Azure Migrate? What like what you know? Why is someone going to do it? Well, Azure Migrate is a set of tools. It's okay. not just one tool. It's kind of like an umbrella. So you create an Azure Migrate project. And within mm. that project, uh, there are several uh, steps. Uh, one is planning your infrastructure. Uh, two is uh, inventorying your infrastructure, then analyzing your infrastructure, then replicating your infrastructure, and then actually doing the migration. Okay. So, it, so, so like again, I, I always try and simplify things. So, it, this is for people who really want to modernize like and 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 move forward with you know you know not just from on-prem but maybe from other cloud scenarios yes. like you, you can bring stuff from wherever but it's about consolidating and moving forward and putting it in a safe place so that's, that's right that, so, that's what we're offering yeah yeah so you, you can start from any cloud uh or a physical machine or machines that are on hyper-v or on vmware uh, it you can actually migrate from uh, there is a part of the tool set a data migration assistant so you can go from um, uh, Windows or Microsoft SQL to Azure SQL or from uh, something to Postgres um, to anyway to managed instances or to a VM running SQL so you can actually do uh, the data migration part as well. Uh, there is a uh, web app migration assistant as well. So if you've got something running like a .NET application running in an IIS server uh, on-prem, you can take that and it will analyze, figure out the dependencies, figure out the languages and the, the frameworks that you need and actually build a web app for you so you can do away with the VM that supports that website and migrate directly into a web app. So it helps you migrate like... Uh, VMs to VM, but also workloads to where workloads need to be appropriate. And migration of a VM, I've always told customers that it's only step one. Okay. Because if you migrate a VM from on-prem to the cloud, yes, you are getting some benefit, but you're not utilizing the power of cloud services. It's still a VM that you have to manage. It's still a VM that you have to uh, patch and, and and it has to have the, your your local accounts and everything else, all the management that you would do for it on prem, you still have to do it in the cloud. And a VM by itself doesn't have the same type of redundancy that for a web app, for example, or a PaaS service or a native cloud service. So I yeah. always say migrating is step one, and it gives you time to figure out what your next step is going to be in terms of modernizing that workload or yeah. re-hosting it, uh, re-architecting it, uh, or, or rewriting it. And, you know, let's let's also bust a myth right now, right? Because a lot of people out there, old school on-prem guys who work in basements, you know who you are. You guys, 
a ref, uh, like yeah but the, so, um moving this stuff and migrating it is actually going to create more work and more jobs like, i just want to miss buff the job thing, like uh, that whole i'm going to lose my job because i'm migrating stuff to the cloud piece right no. and it's it, that I, is not going to happen you there's going to be more work to do <laughs> yes I, I, and I, I i've been asked since we announced the cloud like oh, what was it, seven years ago um this is a question that's been coming back for uh, over and over and over again it's like am i going to lose yeah. my job i'm i'm an on prem guy uh yeah. and my answer has been if your only job if like what you do 5 days a week 8 hours a day or or longer or short uh, in some cases uh if the only job you do is rack servers and pull cables then maybe your job will be affected if you're actually managing the infrastructure, managing the servers, managing uh, the, the, the the networking and the security and, and or any of those parts, your job is not going to disappear. It's actually going to get become more critical to the success because IaaS, for example, is when we're moving a VM from on-prem to IaaS, so infrastructure as a service, it's basically just an extension to your own data center. You're, you're extending your footprint, your data center footprint to a virtual environment that you don't have to pay capital costs for. But the management of these pieces is the same because it's still a VM. Yeah. It's still yeah. a virtual network that you have. It's still a uh, 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 software-defined networking, software-defined storage, uh, VMs that connect to that. And you have to manage it the same way you're managing your machines on-prem. So that's why I always say, it's your first step if you want to uh, leverage uh, native cloud uh, benefits. Well, and it's the same for hybrid cloud because, again, then when you start thinking where you're going to suddenly put your workloads and data and actually, you know, maybe you're going to use the stuff on prem in a different way. Like maybe you're actually mm -hmm. going to, you know, you, like ultimately for something to get into the cloud, it's got to be created in the real world, right? So yep. actually there's a data, you know, there's a data creation um way of thinking about it and that's where kind of the whole edge computing comes into it and all of these kind of things it's just evolved so it's not a case of like do this and that's you know that's the end of it it's it's, it's the beginning it's it, you know it's the antithesis of uh, kind of what, what hybrid will be um for everybody moving forward so you know i think it is really uh, for me it's exciting so let's talk about oh wait you're gonna say you got you got i was gonna to say because you because you mentioned hybrid and um at the beginning, when we first got into Azure, the the marketing and may, maybe Mark, I'm going to get a call from marketing in a minute. I've got I've got uh, a call from my wife who's locked out, so I've got to get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's banging on the door. She the front door is open. We're keeping this in the show, right? Can we get her on camera? <laughs> it's a good off. Well, that's the <laughs> that's the that's the real world right there. Sorry, you were just like, and I'm gonna get told off by marketing. So I'll let, we'll let you get back to that. All right. Yeah, I'm probably gonna get a call from marketing in a minute because at the beginning, uh, the marketing message was move everything to the cloud. In 2019 at Ignite, Jason Zander, which is the corporate vice president for Azure, uh, stood on stage and said what many of us uh, field uh, have known all along what is that is that uh, hybrid is not a transition period. Hybrid is going to be our customers' end state, and that's what we're focusing on now. Yeah. Like we don't. There is always going to be those like crown jewels application or even stuff that is by compliance requirement. You can't migrate to the cloud or because the version of it is so old and it's not supported anymore and, and yeah. whatnot. All of these reasons say that not everything is always going to go to the cloud. Yeah, agreed. But it, it's just so exciting right now. Like this, every single door is open now. And um, a lot of people ask me as well, uh, you know, I've had people come up to me and say, you know, what is Microsoft's hybrid solution? 
Well, it's all this amazing stuff in the cloud plus what you've got on prem all together. Um, it's actually right. really simple. You can literally, you can literally do anything you want. Um, so right. So let's let let's jump back to um, Azure Migrate. And you know what what would you say? What's the process? How does what does somebody need to start thinking about through the process? The most important thing is having a clear understanding of what you're starting with. Okay. Having because I'm sure uh, everybody uh, in the audience listening to this right now is thinking, yeah, what do you mean? Do you know exactly all of the servers that you have, all of the workloads that are running on it, uh, and who owns them in your enterprise? Because I know in the past, uh, I've do, do an inventory, you send the blast email to management and you say, there's a list of servers that we have running in our data center. Uh, who owns this workload? Because you're managing it, but but maybe <laughs> maybe it was put together for a campaign that or a project that is now done. Yeah. Nobody told you that they it wasn't needed anymore, and you've been managing it for the last year for no apparent reason. Yeah. So and then you get you get the the list. Uh, I always use the the scream methods for whatever servers uh, I can't identify a, a an owner. Turn uh, it off. <laughs> no, no, happened. no, don't turn. Don't turn it off because <laughs> if you turn it off, something may happen and you won't be able to turn it back on in some cases because yeah. if it's old, uh, but you unplug it from the network or you disconnect the, the virtual NIC. So it's still running. It just can't connect to anything. And then you wait for the first person to scream and you go, ha, you're the owner now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and once you have that, figure out what pieces you need because... For example, if you migrate a SQL server that's part of an application, a multi-tier application, who knows within your environment whether or not there's not other applications that are using tables on that SQL server as lookups for yeah. customer list, for parts numbers, for whatever it may be. So you move that server and then you end up breaking for other applications that you weren't planning on migrating right away. Yeah, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. So there are tools to allow you to check uh, all of this uh, that are built into um, Azure Migration, or, uh, Azure Migrate, sorry. So the first thing you do is you you set up your project and you uh, build your infrastructure or prepare your infrastructure. So if, it's, if you're migrating physical machine, you install an agent on each of them. If you're migrating a, a, a Hyper-V farm, you install a an appliance on that Hyper-V farm that will then start reading uh, the machine and the network and the traffic and the machine configuration, but at the Hyper-V level. And same thing for uh, AWS, uh, not AWS, but for um, VMware. If you're migrating from a cloud, treat them as physical. So install the agent directly on them from AWS or Google or whatever other cloud uh, you may be, uh, and then treat them as physical, and then you can migrate them. Once the agents or the appliances are set, it will start gathering information as to the type of uh, machines you have, how many you have, uh, what IP, what sizes they are, what uh, uh, storage is uh, attached to them. And I, I can even show you if I, I can share my, my screen with you. Let's talk about the tools. Show us some of the tools. So. Right now, I've got a project, and this is a demo environment, so I can't change anything. This is for me to show you. Um, but I, I started with, like, uh, you get in there, and you go to getting started, and you say, okay, what do you want to do, to migrate? Server, database, or web apps? The biggest cursor I've ever seen. That, Pardon that me? Is a, that is a massive cursor. Look at the size of your cursor. You're oh, big. I know. But it's because when I do demos, uh, I don't want to have... Uh, a tiny little cursor and people are wondering what it is. So I always set it to big and green. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's just trying to be inclusive of people that no, are uh, no, like wait, me. I get it. Like, uh, it's possibly the name of your future book, the big green cursor by Pierre Rangan. That's an idea. That's an idea. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's get back. So once you've figured out whether or not you want to migrate servers, database over web apps or, or, other scenarios, uh, then you set it up in uh, your migration tool. And your migration tool has like the discovery part, which is you set up your infrastructure. Once it's done, uh, it discovers your machine. So in my demo environment here, I have discovered 21,371 servers. Then those could be Windows, so 20,000 of them, Linux, 
and unknown. And unknown may yeah. be um, Linux distributions that we don't recognize in Azure. Uh, and there are 335 servers that are being right now analyzed for dependencies. So if I go to, uh, if I, I can dry, drill into uh, specific machines and I see what they are and which group they're in and whether or not there's been assessments done, but I can take each of these machines and see what the dependencies are. Yeah. And the dependencies are, is it tells me that this particular server let me zoom in uh, on port 443. There's a hundred other servers that have connected to it. So I can drill into that and see what those hundred servers are going to be. Uh, it's going to, it may take a little while because this is, like I said, it's a demo environment. There's uh, two servers that have connected to it over port 135 and so on. So I'll see, it gives me the list so I can actually go and check what those servers are port 80, port 445, anyway. So it, it gives me all of the, the dependencies, so everything that is connecting to them. And if this server was itself connecting to something else on that side of the server, I'd have what, uh, what uh, dependencies that server has. And yeah. I can see what processes are running on that server, so I can see uh, what it actually is running. So is it just running IIS? Is it running... IIS and SQL? Is it running a, a fax server or whatever? So it yeah. tells me all of the, the information on there uh, as part of the dependency uh, anal analysis, and, which is great. And, that, and, and this is free. And this is free. This is out of the box. Free out of the box, right. part of the show migrate. Free as in free as beer. <laughs> and, and then once you've once you've uh, done, if you've uh, discovered all of your machines, you can group them together. So if you've got a bunch of machines that are part of a solution, yeah, you can group them together and then analyze or assess that group uh, okay. to show whether or not. So, for example, this demo appliance. Oh, or let's take another one. Okay, so demo appliance, this one here. Out of all of those machines, ninety-five machines are ready for Azure. Uh, six are ready, but there's some conditions. So there's some may actions you're going to have to do on them. Uh, zero are not ready and uh, zero are unknown. So I know that if I click on this, I can see that it's uh, loading the data, but it would tell me what the uh, action I need to do on those particular server. Maybe yeah. it's got a, a petabyte of data. So see, uh, these ones are ready. This one is conditionally ready, so that's drink, and it brings me to the uh, documentation that tells me what's problem, what's the problem with that particular one. So that one's a CentOS machine, the size, number of disks, number of storages on premise. So you, you can on premises. Sorry, uh, Jeff Woolsey's going to uh, 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 send me an email. That's okay. Well, we haven't had him, we haven't had him on the show yet, so. Uh, oh he's well, on, he, he's on the he's on the list. He's on the hit list. For he's definitely three. the he's definitely the man to uh, to talk about uh, about uh, server. That's for sure. But it's once just... you've got your assessment, because your assessment's going to tell you this is the type of machine you have on prem, but based on its usage, based on its CPU uh, usage, memory usage, storage usage, it's yeah. going to suggest a size in Azure that is appropriate. Okay. Because if you've if you've got like a, a thirty two cores and sixty four terabytes of RAM on a server on prem, you may not want to take a machine in the cloud that's thirty two cores and sixty four terabytes of RAM. Yeah, and, and and also inversely to that, you know, like you said, like the screen method, like you, you know, do you need to move all that to Azure? Like, right? Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, like, and and and, and uh, I suppose this is the starting point when you said you know you're assessing what your project is what, what you know it's the same when you, you do with any project what is the end goal the end goal is i want to achieve this yes. right and then you yes. kind of work back from that and so this is all the way at stage one this is this is the assessing and finding out what i currently got um and then you can decide what you need to appropriately move and then then you can start figuring out what that's going to cost you yes because this part is the most important part that you need to do inventory yeah. your environment analyze it Figure out what you can move, how you can move it, and what to move it to. And that's the, that's the biggest part. 
yeah and the most important because the the next one which is the actual migration yeah. um now so in this one we've actually discovered uh and and we have 708 servers that are ready for migration and i can click on those and it'll give me all the information on those uh this one is a demo environment so there's some are turned off okay so this one tells me that it's got 17 applications on it uh what the dependencies again i can see what the, or what the number of cores number of memory and so on yeah but once i've got that and once i'm there all right let me go back to discovery and management once i'm there uh i can i can now start replicating those vms and once they're replicated now it's to the point where uh, and the replication happens at the beginning. It's a full disk replication. Okay. Once the the disk is replicated, and then everything that's written to the disk, the agent sends to the replication to the uh, to the the target area. Yep. And at one point, they will tell you that your replication is healthy, and then you can start planning your migration. And once you get to planning the migration, which I can't do now because I'm in, in the read only uh, environment. Um, once I've got that, I can do, uh, dry runs where it would, um, it would spin up that environment in a sandbox. Yep. Then you can do all of your testing protocols to see, is the application behaving the way it's supposed to? Is the data all there? Uh, can I get to it properly? Uh, uh can I run the reports that I need to run? Whatever uh, testing protocols you've got in place to see that that application is healthy. Then if you, if you know that it's fine, you say, okay, end the test, it cleans up that uh, sandbox area. And now you're ready to do the, the migration itself. And the migration happens where you create a plan and the plan has multiple steps. So one is, for example, if you got a multi-layered uh, multi, um, application, uh, the first one you would want to uh, replicate would be, let's say, the, the database, okay. and then the middleware, and then the front end. And if you've got Active Directory in there, that it adds a layer of complexity because you first have to decide, if I've got Active Directory, do I extend my Active Directory? Do I replicate a DC? When replicating a DC is not a good idea because you end up with two DCs with the same SID in two different places. Yeah. So the, the, again, that has to be in your planning ahead of time to say, uh, what is my identity um, scenario and how am I going to deal with it, especially well, if I it's mean, machines? In that scenario, you're going to have to cut over from one to the other. Like that's that's just got disaster written all over it. Not necessarily, because uh, if you're migrating to an area where uh, you've already got resources and maybe you already have a DC in that environment. Okay. So then you don't have to worry about it. But for your test in the sandbox, then for your test, you have to replicate a, a domain controller, but for the actual migration, you don't. Yeah, I see. So there, yeah, the, yeah. The, there's a whole thought process that has to uh, occur before you actually hit the migrate button. It's yeah. not an, as easy as say, take this here and put it over there. Okay. So, so obviously, those tools, that tool that you just showed us, obviously, is, it, it, you know, the discovery tool is is, is built into um, Azure Migrate. Um, yes. What other tools is there? You know, is there other tools there, or is there even like third party tools that work along with it? Like, is there any any other things you'd recommend? They they are or, other party you, tools. So it, if you've got Sorry. like an example, uh, uh, um, a subscription or uh, licenses for Mover, which is a partner tool to uh, migrate. Well, instead of running that uh the the free tool then you can use uh partner tools so we are very partner centric at microsoft uh we love our ecosystem and we encourage partners to build solution for for to, to, to help our customers or our, our joint customers uh to be successful so if you're familiar with one if you've used one of those applications before you can uh there are also Sometimes um, considerations that you want to take before you start migrating. If you've got, for example, and I had a customer like that that I talked to in Brazil um, not too, too long ago, where they were deploying Samba everything on-prem. Pardon me? Did he have a Samba server? 
No, they didn't have a SAMP server. They were all on Windows Server, so that was. Uh, but I, but I get the pun. Yeah. So. Um, that's okay. Uh, they already had a CI/CD pipeline to deploy their code to uh, those machines. Yeah. So they said, okay, well, we're looking at migrating the whole thing. And then it became, why? Why go through the process where you've already got the tools in place to deploy your applications properly? And just we just have to branch that CI CD pipeline and say, also deploy, instead of deploy on production, uh, have another environment designed for pre-production and, and target it to... Uh, to VMs in Azure, and then do your testing, uh, replicate, but then you can use Azure Migrate to replicate your, your data, or set it up in a way where your data is going to be replicated in real time or near real time, and then that becomes kind of like a disaster recovery uh, scenario, because you now have an application that runs in both locations with the data that replicates in the background. So you could say, with Azure front door in front, say you go to the cloud, but if this one fails, now go on prem. Yeah. Like they're, they're, they're migrating VMs is not just about the tools. It's a whole way of thinking about what you have, where you are, and where you want to go, and what is the most efficient and business practical way of getting there. So Number one, process and planning. Absolutely. Number two. What would number, be two, number two? Uh, process planning. Number two, inventory and and analysis. Uh, number three, uh, replication or deployment, depending on which of the scenarios that we've discussed. Uh, number three, testing that replication in sandbox. Yeah. Number four, planning the cutover to uh, from on-prem to the cloud, because in a lot of cases, there's going to be some manual. You can't. They can't do everything automated. Yeah. You can. You can. For example, if it if it's running a customer accessible uh, workload, so people are coming from the outside. Well, you're going to have to change your DNS registration. You're going to have to change your 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 name uh, on the internet so that they now go to the new environment versus the old one. So maybe you stop. And in, in the uh, migration planning that in the tool, you can actually insert uh, a manual task where it will stop and wait for you to say, yes, I have done it. And once you've done that, then it can automatically just shut down the on-prem environment. It's still shut, it's just shut down. So something goes wrong, you can spin it back up and that's your your uh, rollback uh, scenario, because that's another thing that you have to consider at every part of the migration process is yeah. things will go wrong. It's not a question of uh, if, it's a question of when. Okay. So what is your plan for rollback? If that part doesn't, roll, doesn't uh, work as expected, how do you roll back to the last known good uh, environment? And then once Migration is done, your manual actions have been uh, created, and the software or the, the tools has shut down your on-prem, basically tells the agent, so yeah, I am migrated, shut them down now gracefully. <laughs> then you can either back them up, uh, keep them as is for a while, but you have to remember that the longer you keep them as is shut down, the longer the delta between where the data that's on one and the yeah. delta that's on the other. So do you want to set up some kind of like, still keep your server your sql server uh running or your database whatever database you have and and have some kind of replication as you, i mentioned as i said you, you said like I, I i think the scenario where you just leave it is is like that is i mean that is not sensible i mean you've got to have some sort of replication going on there yes in, at the very least you, just for a disaster recovery uh yeah, scenario yeah yeah, yeah absolutely but, but now that you've migrated, let's say we've finished migrating the data yeah, and the, and the application. Be a point, right? Where, where, you're, where you're happy enough to, to relax. That's right. But well, now the, your, your normal work kicks in again because now you've got these machines that are not backed up. So you have to set up backup. You have to set up uh, patching and automation and all of the regular um, 
maintenance that you would do on them. You have to figure out your your access policies, uh, who's access to shut down that sort of machine, start that machine, log into that machine. Is that machine going to be uh, available on the internet? Uh, and if so, do you, did you did you create a firewall in front of it? Was that yeah. cre pre-created? If not, like you have to deal with that. Now, now all of the real IT world um, yeah. uh, management tasks they kick in. They're different. But it's different tools and different methodologies that you do uh, on prem, but your skills as an IT manager or or administ uh, system administrator now that becomes critical because you have to apply all of these normal operation things to your new environment. Yeah, well, there's going to be more jobs. Let's just say that. So lots of yep. fun process. <laughs> uh, it's all about the process. Well. Uh, um, Thank you, Roman, for, for digging into that. Um, and, um, you know, it's always, I just love talking to you because it really gets me thinking about stuff. Um, like you're, you're definitely, I'm going to, I don't want to upset all my other guests, but you're definitely one of my favorites. Oh, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank no. you. Um, and we, yeah, we also, we also talk about lovely holidays and food and stuff as well, which is great. Um, so <laughs> yeah, now, um, you know, we're going to move on to that part of the show where we do the, the meme review. Um, so, um, you know, we're working on maybe something new for season three as well. So we'll see, but season two, mm. we've still got the meme review. So, um, let's, let's just, let's just do that. This is where uh, I get made look silly. Um, uh, Roman looks smart, uh, or even smarter than he already is. Um, and, um, yeah, hopefully I'm not the, uh, I'm not the Thanksgiving Turkey, uh, when, when these memes come through. So first meme. Okay. Uh, this is called data center to cloud migration. <laughs> uh, That's... I, I see that, and I'm reminded of another meme. Okay. The, the IT the IT administrator is sitting at the table, going, "This is fine." <laughs> yeah, because we're always um... fighting fires, so that's just another yeah. fire. Yeah, that that's true. It's it's just another fire at the end of the day, and uh, <laughs> that I mean, I think in some people's minds, that's probably what, how they see a cloud migration. Um, <laughs> oh, possibly. <laughs> I, I have to admit, though, uh, I had a customer before um, in my last role at Microsoft. Uh, one of my customers, which will remain nameless for um, yeah. sake of protecting their identity, uh, had a fire like that in their data center. And did it they, was. Did they have replication? There was some replication. Um, Not in the same data center. <laughs> no, 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 it, it, elsewhere. But uh, it's it's the thing is, even with migration and with anything else, when you're looking at disasters, it's it takes a disaster to highlight the blind spots that you have in your environment. Yeah. Like for example, in their case, uh, the blind spot is their generators was connected to the same um, city grid for all of it, uh, it's, it's electronics. So even though there was a generator, the electronics were connected to city grid. So when the fire yeah. broke, the first thing that the firemen did is cut the power to that, uh, that area, which cut yeah. the power to the generator, which actually turned off the generator. So whatever else in that building was unaffected by the fire uh, crashed uh, ungracefully. Oh, oh, and that was just that was just mistake number one, and we we could have another show, complete show on on fails and uh, things that uh, come up. But yeah, we should we should we I, should I love... do a, we should do a fail show. I think that's uh, I think I think that 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 would be interesting. That's a that's good a idea. Good idea. That's a very good idea. Yeah, let's yeah. talk. Let's talk. Let's talk about it it fails. I think that's a really good. You learn more about failures than you do about successes. Yeah. That's, All right, that's, that's, what, that's what my boss is always telling me. <laughs> oh, my boss always told me it's okay to fail, but fail fast, learn and repeat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not, not repeat the failure, but repeat. not repeat the failure, but repeat <laughs> the, repeat the attempt with, yeah. uh, with the yeah. learnings uh, taken into consideration. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Let's do meme number two.
I was thinking I was thinking about making a gesture, but I don't know if we can blur it uh, in time. I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming. So Oh man. That is a old video uh, that we did for <laughs> introduction to Azure Fundamentals. Uh, need help with and I do, and I do remember that yeah. the day, the night before, we had uh, other issues, and we stayed up really late redoing a lot of the scripts and demos that we were building. Um, no worries. And and this is that it's kind of like in any video, if you take the right frame, everybody looks like crap. Yeah, <laughs> and somebody found that frame where yeah, I look you, like a, a zombie. Do you know? Do you know who found that? Can you guess who found that? Most likely, Anthony Bartolo. Yeah. <laughs> you don't. Anthony, Anthony, I will find you, and I will, I will get you. I, I'm like Liam Neeson on this one. I'm gonna go take in on you. <laughs> Oh, that is the best meme. And the thing is, I totally got that because I knew it was coming. Um, I was also like 30, 30 pounds heavier and I had hair. No, though, to be, you look great now. So don't worry. Don't be silly. Like, you, like you're like you like a fine wine. You've actually got better with age. Do you know what I mean, Roman? So don't, don't you worry about that. I keep telling my wife that, but she somehow doesn't believe it that well. All right. Is well, there another meme? No, 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 this is, this is it. Right, we just, sorry, sorry, we didn't mean to get you there. We didn't mean to get you That's there. Okay. Okay. Uh, That's okay. That's <laughs> okay. Those are all over the internet, and I, I own your, them. Uh, it's your me. Silence, your silence was absent. For There was like a few split seconds of silence where you were like, That's me. <laughs> so yeah, funny. that is, that, that used to be me. Um, well, uh, anyway, look, we, uh, we love having you on the show. Thank you for being a good sport. And um, letting us um, let us um, poke James at you, so we very much appreciate it. Um, good, good. Anytime. Uh, um, and Anthony, um, thank you, Anthony. Um, good, good shout on that one. Um, so just uh, let's summarise really quickly. Um, obviously, Azure Migrate. Um, it's a, a suite of tools that enables you to, to to figure out what you've got, do the inventory, figure out where you're going to go before you go crazy and do a migration. But it enables right. you to have the best view possible uh, to get ready to do a migration in the best, cleanest, safest way possible. So, That's take right. advantage of our tools. If, if Pierre, if people want to find out more about this, is there a, a good place to go? Microsoft Docs or something like that? We'll, we'll uh, Docs.microsoft.com and just look for Azure Migrate. Um, I'll uh, send you an, a, a link that we can put at the bottom. And um, there's uh, tons of documentation. There's tons of videos. I know uh, Sarah Lean, uh, our uh, colleague, had done a lot of presentations on it. Uh, there's some uh, Ignite sessions that I've done on uh, on migration to the uh, VM migration to the cloud. There's tons of information out there. And um, oh, and there's also our Discord server where if you have specific questions, you can come and ask. And I'll send you the uh, link for that one as well literally can't say fairer than that so Ro, thank you so much for your time everybody um i think you'll agree that was a great episode especially that meme and uh, that meme was a classic so um honestly you'll find us on channel nine you'll find us on youtube um i will be posting this on linkedin in due course so if you've seen it on linkedin thank you for clicking on it um if there's anything you want to know which is server azure vm any kind of any of this kind of stuff that you want to find out about if you want to do your own migration you've got questions let us know and we will get it to uh, an expert like pierre um, and hopefully embarrass them on another show so thanks a lot for joining us today um take care and